But one day, when he got a call from his student Susie Katwenda in the Congo, saying she thought bonobos, a type of great ape, might actually share. I was just like, oh, come on, Susie, there's no way. And um, she was really insistent, so I said, okay, well, let's do an experiment. So Hare and Katwenda set up a special situation for two bonobos. One, the stranger, was locked in a room with a key that could be turned only from the other side. Saki! 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 The other, in this case Saki, was free to wander around. Then Katwenda places a pile of fruit pieces outside the locked room. Saki has a choice. She can eat all the food herself, or open the door to release the strange bonobo she's never met and possibly give up some of her food. Think about it. You see somebody um, at the table next to you with no food. Are you going to go up to the person that you don't know and say, hey, would you like to eat half of the food I just ordered? You know, how many times have any of us done that? Will Saki open the door for the stranger and share the food? closest thing that you could think of to doing charity in, in animals. So humans might not be the only ones capable of kindness to strangers. But what was Saki thinking? Did she feel sorry for the other bonobo? Was she feeling empathy? I can't really tell that. All I can tell you is that Saki didn't have to do that. Saki could have just eaten the food. It may be that um, bonobos just really enjoy eating together. It may not be empathy in this case. Empathy. It's considered a uniquely human trait, explained here in the classic Funny Face. Is it something like sympathy? Oh, well, it goes beyond sympathy. Sympathy is to understand what someone feels. Empathy is to project your imagination so you actually feel what the other person is feeling. And to demonstrate that uniquely human trait, I've come here to Times Square to test it out for myself on the world's toughest crowd. My kindly producers have shut me into a plexiglass box that can be unlocked only from the outside. I'm totally helpless. Will my fellow human beings sense my distress and help me out? Sure enough, after a few weird looks, my species comes through over and over again. Would an animal ever do this? The answer might come from the last creature you'd think to ask, rats. At the University of Chicago, neuroscientist Peggy Mason is about to show me that empathy might not be just for humans. Are you gonna be empathic today? Yeah. To test her idea, she's built a special predicament for two rats. One is trapped inside a plexiglass tube with a door that can be opened only from the outside. The other is free to run around, and he's never been taught how to open that door. So you think that free rat is literally trying to set free trapped rat out of pure human concern? Or rat concern, as the case may be. Unbelievable. Look at rat. that. He's trying to figure yeah. it out. What yeah. the heck? Oh, oh my gosh! And when they see their pal struggling, they certainly seem to work pretty darn hard to get their buddy out. He is pulling him out. Come on! <laughs> he's like, and now he's... crying out loud, I got you out, now bust out of here! Mason has run hundreds of rats through these setups, and she's convinced it's the strongest experimental evidence to date of animal empathy. So it's the first experiment where there's an action that is motivated by empathy. They're using empathic concern to actually help the other rat. So just how much do these rats really care? Mason wanted to find out. So she did a second experiment to give these rats a moral dilemma. What we did was we put two restrainers in the arena, and in one restrainer was the cage mate, and in the other restrainer was five chocolate chips. And these are rats that were eating, on average, seven chocolate chips in a sitting. So five chocolate chips, no problem. What will the free rat do? Will he hog all the chocolate to himself? Free the friend? So in theory, we've given free rat a choice. That's right. He can either let his pal out of the tube or go get a nice, tasty snack. Hmm, checking out his pal. Oh, come on! He let the guy out first. Incredible. 
And whoever gets there first is gonna well, gobble it all up. Will they? Or will they share? They're not smart enough to share their rats. They're nice, they share. So on average, the uh, free guy only eats three and a half chocolates. There's five chocolates, so he's leaving one and a half chocolates. I might have to think twice the next time I want to call someone a rat.